Okay, so diving right in with Hey everyone, in today's video, I am going to walk you through the steps I take when teaching my students how to write their own reviews. Now, this is a really fun writing unit I love to do to kind of extend that opinion writing in a real world way. I always explain to my students that people write reviews all the time and that I read reviews all the time before I decide to go somewhere or buy something. If you've watched my videos before, then welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I'm a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, and strategies with K through two teachers just like you. My goal over here on YouTube is always to provide you with ideas and strategies that you can take and use in your classroom right away. So if you are ready to see how I teach writing reviews, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Now before I dive in, I wanna let you know I have done plenty of other videos like this. I did one where I walk through the steps I take when teaching personal narratives. I have another one for how to write friendly letters. I've done a couple in the past. They're all in my writing workshop uh, playlist. So I'll link that down below in case you wanna check those out after this video. Essentially what I'm going to do is walk you through the exact lessons I teach when teaching this unit. And these lessons are all found in my SJT writing club. Just so you know, in case you wanna find these exact ones, this is what the SJT writing club looks like. It is basically packed with everything you could possibly need for teaching writing in a K through two classroom. So over here on the left hand side, you can find writing reviews. And when you click that, you will see the writing reviews lessons. You'll see some rubrics and you'll see some I can statements to help you plan out all these lessons. And I have these for essentially every single type of genre writing unit you might teach in a K through two classroom. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through each of the steps so you can see the anchor charts, the activities, and all of the ideas that I would actually use in my classroom. Okay, so diving right in with lesson number one is of course to explicitly teach what we're going to be learning about. So in this case, you would explicitly teach what review writing is, and I would link it back to opinion writing. So I would probably teach this unit in the spring, that's when I've taught it to my own first grade students in the past, and I link it back to how we wrote our own opinions. So earlier in the year, we would have started writing our opinions and providing some reasons to support those opinions. And now we're going to take it one step further and we are going to apply it to some real world opinion writing by writing our own reviews. Here is the anchor chart I would use. It says review writing is a type of writing where we share our opinions about something we've tried and we try to persuade the reader. So here's an example of a good review. This book deserves five stars. I couldn't put it down. If you're looking for a fun, fast read, try it out. And a thumbs down one, that restaurant was not good. It took forever to get our food and there was no kids menu. If you are hungry, go somewhere else. Those of course are just some quick little examples so students understand what a review might be. And then I say often it includes a rating. So there might be a star rating, a one through 10 rating, a thumbs up, thumbs down. It includes the author's opinion, reasons and examples to support that opinion. And then this is where the persuasion part comes in, but they often tell the reader to either try it or not try it. After sharing what a review is, I actually show my students some real life reviews that I found on different sites. Here are some examples that might interest them. From Gamefly, this is a video game one. It says, great game. If you have a Wii and you want some excitement around your home, you would love Mario Kart. Mario Kart allows you to start with four different Grand Prix selections. Then there are four races inside of those. And it goes on to explain why that person loves Mario Kart and why they think it's a great game. Of course, you want to show them some good ones and some bad ones. Here is one for a board game. This is Toys R Us about the game Perfection. And the subject line was title. It says, it was my first time playing the game Perfection. I tried this game and it is very simple and boring because of how you just put the shapes into the little board. I would honestly recommend this to little kids instead of older kids because of how boring it can be. <laughs> 
reviews crack me up. But anyway, so what you can do is you can find some reviews for games and things they might be interested in and share some real life examples with them. This would all be done on the very first day of introducing review writing. So after we've explained what it is, I've showed them some examples. What I would usually have them do is actually break into small groups and I would just bring in some toys. Now I have, you know, five and seven year old boys at my house, so I could bring in something that's relevant. Um, if you don't have something like that, you could go to the dollar store, you could borrow some games and some toys and just let students kind of play with these little toys and have them together practice making reviews and saying reviews out loud about these toys. Now you're not going to be a huge stickler for exactly the way they word this yet, but you do want to let them know that they should give it some sort of rating so you guys can come up with a rating yourself. They can say if they like it or don't like it and they need to provide some reasons to support that opinion. So that would kind of be the intro day. On day two of writing reviews, I like to introduce the five star rating system. Now you can introduce any type of rating system you want with your students, but this is the one that I like to use in my own classroom. And before we even go into that, I like to give students an example. What I'll do is I'll actually choose two books, right? I just grabbed these, but any two books and I will say, all right, boys and girls, I'm going to share my reviews of some books. And I'll be like, this book right here, I give four blue stars. And this book is seven pink ribbons. And then I'll just like put them down and kind of stare at the kids. And then I'll ask them, what does that mean? What do you think that means? And they might have all sorts of, you know, examples of why they think maybe the pink ribbons are better because there were seven and maybe the other one's four blue stars. But this kind of illustrates the example that we need to have some sort of cohesive rating system and our reader, the listener, the audience needs to know what that rating system means. So here's where I will show them the five star system that we are going to use in our classroom and let them know as we write our reviews, this is the system we're going to use. So if we give something five out of five stars, that means it is the best ever and we think everyone should try this now. If we give it four out of five stars, we think it is great and we think you should really try this when you get a chance. If you give something three stars, it is good. It's not your favorite, you know, there could be others, but it is good, it's all right. Two stars we say is so-so, it's not horrible, it's not bad, but it's not really that good either. And if we give something one star, we say it is no good, don't even bother trying it. After we've reviewed the five star system that we are going to use in our classroom, I like to have students start brainstorming about what reviews they would give different things. And I do that with these review cards right here. So first there are some review cards that just asks how many stars. So how many stars would you give the restaurant McDonald's and why? What about how many stars would you give your closest park? So they can think about a local park. How many stars would they give that? Then I also have some cards to get them thinking about both ends of the spectrum. So the best and the worst. So here I have some best of the best. Name a restaurant you would give five stars and then provide some reasons for your rating. And then here, same thing with it's the worst. Name a snack you would give one star and provide a reason for that rating. And then I also have as an extension, if your students are really getting this, I try to have them think about something in the middle with these stuck in the middle cards. Name a toy you would give three stars and provide reasons for that rating. Now in a first grade classroom, we would definitely practice this orally so I could listen in and hear how students are understanding that rating system. And then at the end, if you wanted to extend it and you have some independent writing time, they could pick one of those cards and then just on a blank piece of paper or in a writing journal, they can write down their rating or their answer to the question with some reasons to support that opinion. Okay, on day three of writing our reviews, this is where students are going to start brainstorming a review that they can write. So first I wanna go over just some ideas of things that students can review. So I'd like to do this with my whole class and we will make an anchor chart and we'll write down some things we can review. Some examples include movies and books. We can review TV shows. We can review restaurants. We can review video or board games. We can review recess games. We can review different stores. We can review all sorts of different places and parks 
and we can review toys. Now you might think of some others, but those are just some to get you started. And once we've gone through that, I like to give my students their own brainstorming sheet that looks like this. And here in each of these categories, they are going to think of their favorite thing and their least favorite thing. So they will think of a five star movie or TV show and they'll think of a one star movie and TV show. And they'll do the same for books, for a place to visit, for restaurants, for a toy or game, and other, which could be any of those things from the brainstorming we just did. And this sheet is where they will eventually pick one of these to write their review from. So this is where they are just getting their own opinions out there. And again, they're going to end up taking one of these to write a full review on. So on day four, students will choose a topic and they will think of some reasons to support that opinion. So you'll remind students of all the different things we can write reviews about, and you will have them look back at that brainstorming sheet that they did yesterday, and they're going to choose just one to start their planning. Now here are some examples of the planning sheets I have. I have these two right here. One has two reasons and one has three reasons depending on what grade level you're teaching and uh, the extent of what you want your students to end up writing. And just like with any of my writing lessons, you are going to model this in front of the class so students can see exactly what to do when they go back and do it on their own in independent writing. So you would take one of your brainstormed topics from yesterday and then here is a teacher example of how you would model this in front of the class. So I would write my opinion of the product and I would color in all five stars and I would say I think Five Guys deserves five stars because the food is delicious. Now realistically Five Guys is probably like a three and a half but Five Guys at the old school I worked in here was a very popular restaurant that all of the kids went to after school and they loved it. So of course I wanted to make sure that it was like connecting to the students. So for this example, Five Guys, five stars. Also when writing that opinion, I do like to have a sentence frame for my students to share their opinions. So I like to say, I think blank deserves blank stars because, so I just kind of filled that in. And then I gave them two reasons. I said reason number one is that you get your food quickly and you don't have to wait a long time. And reason number two is they have the best chocolate Oreo milkshake. I also like to let my students know that there might be a ton of reasons why you think this is a five-star restaurant, but you want to narrow it down to two of the most important reasons for you. So I explained that for me, I like to get our food quickly because I usually have my boys with me and I don't like waiting a really long time. And I also explained that dessert is my favorite part of a meal. So I really like to point out that Oreo chocolate milkshake that I just love. After students watch you complete this planning sheet, they will get their own planning sheet and do the same exact thing with their own topic. On day five of teaching writing reviews, this is where my students will practice uh, stretching their reasons. And what this means, my students will have been very familiar with this. Uh, if you are in the writing club, you will know your students will know how to do this. They basically take their planning sheet and for each of the reasons, so whether they did the two box template or the three box template, they will grab a piece of paper for each of those reasons and they will write it on that paper. So here is what I mean by that. So here you can see I took the two reasons I wrote yesterday. I made them a nice complete sentence. I wrote, they have the best chocolate Oreo milkshake I have ever tried. So I kind of reworded it a little bit. And then I said, Five Guys is a fast restaurant where you order at the counter, the food comes out quickly. I always explain to my kids that since that first one was just our planning sheet, we might have a more uh, cohesive and coherent way to say these things when we're actually writing our story. So here's where I'd write them in complete sentences and add a little more information. And then of course, always draw pictures to match. Now, just to clarify, I would not model doing both of those in front of the class. I would probably do one and then I would explain to them that you will color it in, but I wouldn't spend the time, you know, coloring in the milkshake and all that in front of my kids. I would, however, walk them through, here are my reasons. I would reread it from my planning sheet and then rewrite it onto my page and then quickly sketch an illustration to match it so they know what they're doing independently. All right, day six is a fun one. This is where we're going to add some examples to our reasons. So before I have students do this, I actually like to use a real life first grade writing review that I did years ago. 
um, and I display it in front of the class like this right here. This student of mine reviewed the dollar store and this was her review. She said, are you looking for a place to shop and not spend a lot of money? The dollar store is a great store and should get five stars. You can find so many things at the dollar store. When my family goes there, my mom gets some food and me and my sisters get a toy. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Everything in the store is only $1. And then it goes on to finish it. But what I like to point out is I like to color code these. And I show my students here that in the teal, that is the opinion, right? As we're reading this, her opinion is the dollar store is a great store and should get five stars. Then we have some reasons. Some reasons she thinks it's five stars are you can find so many things at the dollar store and it doesn't cost a lot of money. The items don't cost a lot of money. So then we can give some examples for each of those reasons, which are in green. So when she says you can find so many things at the dollar store, some examples are you can get some food, that's what her mom gets, and her and her sisters get a toy. So we know they have food and toys there. She also says it doesn't cost a lot of money. Well, what's an example of that? Everything costs $1. When I give my students a real life example from another first grader, they can understand what those examples might sound like and look like. After explaining that, I will go ahead and model doing this myself. So I will take out one of the reason sheets that I did yesterday when I stretched my reasons and I will display it under the doc cam. And if we're looking at the milkshake example, I will reread it. I'll say they have the best chocolate Oreo milkshake I have ever tried. Now I need to give them an example. Why is this the best one? Like what is the example? What do they have in it? So this is where I write, they use real Oreos and they put a bunch in there. The whipped cream is also a great topping. So that's the example for my reason. I say it's the best one, here's why. They throw a ton of real crushed up Oreos in there and they even top it with some whipped cream. Now you will also see in that illustration that I went back and added whatever example I added in there, I wanted to add those details to my illustration as well. And just so you can see another quick modeled example for my other reason about how the food comes out quickly, the example is it only takes about five minutes to get your food so you can still get home and do your homework before bed. Just again giving them a quick example if I say it is fast well how fast are we talking? Fast might mean different things for different people. So then students will go back to their own stretched out reasons they will reread it and they will think of an example they can add to further emphasize and further point out their reason. So now your students already have the main bulk of their review. They have their two or three reasons and they have some examples with those reasons too. But now we need to go back and I like to have my students do the middle of their book first and now we're going to add the beginning and the end. So first I like to have students think of a catchy opening. I let my students know that before we just dive in and just share the review right away, we may want to open it in a more fun, catchy way. So I like to use an anchor chart like this one. This is actually the exact same anchor chart my students will have seen in their regular opinion writing one. So you can see for the opening, I let them know they can ask a question, they can use an exclamatory remark, or they can just say a statement. So for example, do you want to know the best book to read? Are you looking for the easiest pet to take care of? Do you think kids should be allowed to play video games? And then just so you can see here, I also have some examples for the conclusion of their story as well. When I model this, I actually walk through that anchor chart with them and I will go ahead and pick out an example. I might say, hmm, I think I'm gonna try asking a question. And then I will go ahead and write, do you like burgers, hot dogs, and fries? Then you would love Five Guys. It is a five star restaurant. And I show students how that's a little bit more fun and engaging because then the person reading it is like, yeah, I like hot dogs, I like hamburgers, I like french fries, and they wanna keep reading. And then they find out your opinion at the end of that little paragraph. So after you've modeled that, students will of course go to their own and they will practice that themselves on the front page of their review. And you could see that that was also the page where they color in their five star rating, they're saying what they're reviewing and they write their name on that page. And then naturally the last thing my students will write when they are doing a review is they will try to write a persuasive ending using that same exact anchor chart as before, where students can either ask a question, give an exclamatory remark, or a statement. So here is my modeled example right here. I said, every family should try five guys. So I used a statement. And then I said, if you go, invite me, exclamation point. 
I would love to join you because the food is so delicious. So here I really let students know that I think families should go. I have a dad thinking about all the delicious food and the daughter and a son. Letting them know I think it's pretty family friendly and I think they would definitely enjoy it. If you follow my writing videos then you'll know the last two days are always the same. This is when we focus on editing and publishing. Now once the bulk of our book is already done we are going to go through and edit it. I like to use editing sheets that look like this. There are two different ones included in all my writing units based on grade level and student ability. So we have this one with the smiley faces and this one with the check marks. But here students are looking for things like spaces, sentences with capital letters, punctuation, and rereading the writing to make sure it makes sense. Once the work is edited, this is when we go through our publishing checklist, which is our last step to make sure our book is completely ready. And now you'll also know if you've been following my writing videos that the publishing checklist is different based on every single genre that we write. So here is what the reviews publishing checklist looks like and students need to go through and make sure they did all of these things. Did they clearly state their opinion? Did I provide reasons for my opinion? Did I give an example for my reasons? Did I persuade my reader to try it or not try it at the end? Did I go through my editing checklist? And then of course, did you have colorful illustrations and is your handwriting the neatest you can make it? So individually, students will walk through all those steps to make sure their book is published and ready to go. Now I do usually get questions about the editing and publishing checklist in terms of how students go about doing this because students might work at a different pace. As my students finish up all those pages and when they are completely done, they will walk through the editing portion and then they will walk through the publishing portion at their own pace. Now, when looking at that publishing checklist, if they miss something here and let's say, oh wait, we can't find an example for one of these opinions, they will need to go back into their story and they will have to either rewrite it. So they might need to get a whole new page and rewrite it if they kind of messed it up or if they didn't really make a very clear example. But if they can just erase or add onto it, that also is totally fine. My students in my classroom always worked at different paces. Now, if I had a student that was like, you know, three or four days behind the others, that is a student that would probably be working with me a lot during the independent writing portion. Or we may have given them some supports to help them get to that stage. So maybe they were doing a little bit of copying some teacher writing, maybe the actual amount of work they had to do is cut down a little bit. However you scaffold or support them is totally fine, but it is normal for your students to finish within, you know, one to three days of one another. I do get that question a lot, so I wanted to make sure that was clear. Generally speaking, if I have a student that finished on day one and other students are still working on days two and three of their publishing process, those day one students, what they can do is they can grab new books and they can start writing different reviews. They can kind of extend on this writing review genre a little bit more during their independent writing time. So there you have all of the steps that I usually take when teaching my students to write reviews in a first or second grade classroom. Now I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but every single anchor chart, sheet, activity, modeled example, all of that is included in my SJT Writing Club, where for a monthly or yearly fee, you get access to everything inside the club, all the PDFs, all the videos, all the ideas, suggestions, everything included. So I'll go ahead and link that down in the description below in case you want to check it out. And if you are already a member, be sure to check out the writing reviews unit and you can do this with your class as well. Now, of course, those sheets are exclusively in the club, but hopefully by walking through each step, you can see how you can do this in your own classroom, even if you are not a member of the SJT Writing Club. Now, I would love to know if you teach your students how to write reviews in the classroom, or do you just stick to just like regular opinion writing about all different types of topics? Let me know down in the comments. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. And if you have other skills or subjects or ideas that you want to see how I would walk through teaching it, go ahead and drop those down in the comments. I'll see if I can make a video addressing that specific skill. All right, make sure you press subscribe, click that bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.